Hello everyone, it's Miss Caroline here and I've got a story by the person who wrote about Thomas the Tank Engine, only this one is called Henry the Green Engine. So I hope you enjoy it and I'm going to start now. Henry the Green Engine, and there he is with lots of people waving at him. I used to go to school on an engine like that, oh sorry, on a train pulled by an engine like that. Okay, where are we? Henry the Green Engine, and it's by Reverend W. Audrey, and it's called The Flying Kipper. Lots of ships use the harbour at the big station by the sea. The passenger ships have spotless paint and shining brass. Other ships, though smaller and dirtier, are important too. They take coal, machinery and other things abroad and bring back meat, timber and things we need. Fishing boats also come there. They unload their fish onto the quay. Some of it is sent to shops in the town and some goes in a special train to other places far away. The railway men call this train the Flying Kipper. One winter evening, Henry's driver said, We'll be out early tomorrow. We've got to take the flying kipper. Don't tell Gordon, he whispered. But I think if we pull the kipper nicely, the fat controller will let us pull the express. Hurrah, cried Henry, excited. That will be lovely. He was ready at five o'clock. There was snow and frost. Men hustled and shouted, loading the vans with crates of fish. The last door banged and the guard showed his green lamp and they were off. But first of all, what can you see in the picture? Can you see the green engine? And can you see the men unloading the truck with all the crates? Come on, come on, don't be silly, don't be silly, puffed Henry to the vans as his wheels slipped on the icy rails. Mm. I can see Henry here and he's puffing because there's ice making everything slippery. The van shuddered, shuddered and groaned, trot trick, trot trick, trot trick, all right, all right, they answered grudgingly. That is better, that is better, puffed Henry more happily as the train began to gather speed. Thick clouds of smoke and steam poured from his funnel into the cold air and when his firemen put on more coal, the fire's light shone brightly on the snow around. That's where they're doing the coal. Hurry, 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 panted Henry. They whooshed under bridges and clattered through stations, green signal lights showing as they passed. They were going well. The light grew better and a yellow signal appeared ahead. Distant signal up, thought Henry. Caution. His driver, shutting off steam, prepared to stop but the home signal was down. All right, Henry, away we go. They couldn't know the points from the main line to the siding were frozen and that the signal had been set at danger. A fall of snow had forced it down. What's it mean, the word danger? A goods train waited in the siding to let the flying kipper pass. The fireman and the driver were drinking cocoa in the brake van. The guard pulled out his watch. The kipper is due, he said. Who cares, said the fireman. This is good cocoa. The driver got up. Come on, fireman, back to our engine. Hey, the fireman grumbled. I haven't finished my cocoa yet. A sudden crash. The brake van broke. 
the three men shot in the air like jack-in-the-boxes and landed in the snow outside. <gasps> Henry's driver and fireman jumped clear before the crash. The fireman fell headfirst into a heap of snow. He kicked so hard that the driver couldn't pull him out. There he is. Henry sprawled on his side. He looked surprised. The goods train fireman waved his empty mug. You clumsy great engine. The best cup of cocoa I've had, I've ever had. And you bump into me and spill it all. Never mind your cocoa, fireman, laughed his um, driver. Run and telephone the breakdown gang. What a mess. What's happened? And where has it happened? Where is this? What can you tell me? The gang soon cleared the line, but they had hard work lifting Henry to the rails. The fat controller came to see him. Signal was down, sir, said Henry nervously. Cheer up, Henry. It wasn't your fault. Ice and snow caused the accident. I'm sending you to crew, a fine place for sick engines. They'll give you a new shape and a larger firebox. Then you'll feel a different engine and won't need special coal anymore. Won't that be nice? Yes, sir, said Henry, the green engine, doubtfully. Henry liked being at crew, but was glad to come home. A crowd of people waited to see him arrive in his new shape. He looked so splendid and strong that they gave him three cheers. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Beep, 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 beep! Thank you very much, he whistled happily. I'm sorry to say that a lot of little boys are often late for school because they wait to see Henry go by. They often see him pulling the express and he does it so well that Gordon is jealous. But that is another story. And that's the end of our first story about Henry the Green Engine. So if you go and ask your adults to write a note in your learning log, then it'll go towards you being a bronze or a silver or a gold or even a platinum reader. So don't forget to ask them. Bye-bye, everybody.